Okay, so here we have the, uh, the Smock M80 X Pro Plus or the Smock X Pro M80 Plus, whichever way around. Okay, right, so um, let's have a quick tour of the device. Uh, what we got here, we've got a, a spring loaded 510 connector. I'll just show you that. There we are, you can see I can push that in. It has got a, a flathead screw on it as well, and you can twist it ever so slightly, but not very much. So I'm guessing that's not really that adjustable. Um, You've got four Allen keys on here, uh, four Allen screws on the top. On the bottom, you've got a micro USB port for your charging. You've got some battery vent holes there, and again, four Allen key screws on the bottom. Now, this is not designed to have usable user replaceable batteries, and there's something stuck in there. I don't know what that is. I won't worry about that. I think it's a bit of tissue or something. Just there, look, see. Um, it's not designed to have the batteries user replaceable, but it does contain two 18650s, I believe, and according to the blurb, they are lithium polymer. Uh, I've not had this thing apart, but by all accounts, they actually are soldered in, so if you were to replace these, you'll need to get your soldering iron out. Um, but, you know, that's it, that's what it is. It's designed not to be user, user replaceable. Okay, here is the... The control business end of it. Let's get this right way up for you lot. So you can see there, this has your, your basic interface. You've got the fire button here, you've got a plus and minus here, and you've got a reset uh, switch there. Presumably, if the um, the device crashes in any way, shape, or form, it does have another function, and that is you need to use the reset switch in conjunction with the uh, the power switch in order to update your firmware. Um, now, if I was to tap the reset switch here, I don't think this is, is this going to fit in there. That's not that's not quite pointy enough. Let's get a smaller one. There we are. Tap the reset switch, and you can see mine says X Pro V Treble Zero Five. Now, when I initially had this, that said X Pro V Treble Zero Four, and that was one of the ones of the problem firmware. Now, the problem with the firmware was that in temperature control mode, it would take somewhere in the region of 5 to 7 seconds in order to actually fire your coil, regardless if your coil was a, was a nickel build or a cannonball build or a nichrome build. It would still take that length of time to fire it. All versions of the M80 Plus released, certainly after this video goes out, will have the, uh, the correct firmware on it. Um, if you do need to update your firmware, well, when you get your, if, if you if you do decide to buy one of these, just tap the reset switch. It will tell you the version. If it is version four, pop over to the Smock website and you can get instructions on how to actually do the update. And they provide a little video and showing you how to do it. So I won't really go into detail here on that. Anyway, so this is currently in variable wattage mode, and uh, as you can see, if I press the up, and it does start to scroll pretty quick. It will reach 80 watts. And it will go down. It does not round robin, by the way. So you, you, you've got to go one way or the other. You can't loop round. It will go down to six. Okay. So as you can see, I've been using this at 25 watts. There we are. Um, right. You've got a five click on and off function. So let's do that now. So that's now locked. It's not off it's locked so that's locked now it's locked you can actually see that there's a there's a date and time yeah pointless but there we go it is what it is as they say okay so if I press the fire button three times in quick succession you actually get into the menu so and I can scroll through so what we got then it's pretty quick this so uh, one is the mode you want it in so being that temperature, wattage, or mechanical mode. Two is your puff counter limit thing. I've never been bothered with that. Three is to set the time. Uh, four is your temperature limitation there. You see that? And five. Oh, right. One, two, three. And option number five is to turn it off or on. Power on, power off. There we go. So it says goodbye in a nice smiley face, and if I press the fire button, nothing will happen unless I press the fire button five times, and it turns on. So there we go. So that's that. So <clears throat> I've been using this mostly in variable wattage mode. I have, of course, tested it in the mechanical mode and in the uh, 
in the temperature control mode. Now, mechanical mode, I'm not going to go into too detail here, too much detail here, but basically what it does, you put it in mechanical mode and it will give the power that's in the battery to your coil. That's that. It's like behaves like a mechanical mo uh, mod. Um, actually, while we're on that subject, the range of ohmage that this will fire ranges from 0 0.1 ohms to 3.0 ohms, I believe is the spec. I've not bothered to try anything with 3 ohm coil on it. I don't have a 3 ohm coil or anything, and I, frankly, you'd be wasting my time actually building one. So uh, there we go. I've, I've, I've not had any problems with that. Uh, it has fired anything I've put on it. Um, as long as it has been within that spec. So, yeah, that's 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 encroach on the temperature control mode, shall we? Because we need to get this out of the way. So let's put it into version th uh, three clicks for the menu, and in there, and I want it in temp mode. Bink, there it is. Now that's switched over, and it looks very similar to the the DNA forty screen. Um, here is the DNA 40 screen, just for comparison. It's also 25 watts and, and funny enough, 520 Fahrenheit. As a point, actually, this only measures in Fahrenheit. It doesn't have a Celsius mode like the later revisions of the DNA 40. Um, but as you're soon going to see, this doesn't really matter anyway. Right, what we've got here then. Let's move this out of the way. I've got here a nickel coil. It's not built in with any 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 intention to vape it it's here for demonstration purposes only so this is a refresher then i'm going to pop this onto dna 40 okay because we know what should happen but if you don't know as i say it's a little refresher so it's 420 degrees fahrenheit and i'm going to fire the coil and you can just about see both of those on your screen and it comes up temperature protected and as you can see there the coil well, it appears to do absolutely nothing. Okay? So that's fine. That's what we expect. And if I was to put some cotton in here, and I'm not going to do that because you know what happens if I put cotton into a DNA 40. It doesn't burn. So long as you've got the temperature low enough. Okay? So, yeah. The DNA 40. And before anyone claims shenanigans on me, I'm keeping that in sight. Let's just pop this on the uh, on the X Pro. Get that nice and tight in there. Like I say, these coils, and you can see they're not the best, but they're not designed to be vaped on. Okay, that I've just thrown this build on here just in order to demonstrate this. That's all it's for. So. As we saw previously, we're in temperature mode, and it is on 420 degrees Fahrenheit. And you know what? I didn't make a note of the reading that was on the DNA 40, but... 2.3. Uh, sorry, 0 0.23 ohms it comes out of here. And keep in mind, this is in temperature mode. Um, right, when I fire this, see what happens. It does not cut out, and that thinks that's at 354 degrees Fahrenheit. But it is limiting the wattage. Did you see that? I've set it at 25, but it's limiting the... Oh, now it's going up. Now it's going down. It's it's weird. Right, and that's starting to warp my coil now, so God knows what that's going to read. 0 0.84 now. Right. Let's crank this up. Sorry, my camera's having a hard time keeping focus here. I'm going to put this to 40 because the DNA 40 can't go above that, so I want to keep this fair. Okay, so let's fire it again. And it glows, okay. Now, when I'm firing, it is limiting the wattage. It's not actually reaching 40, uh, 40 watts. So it's reaching 32 there, and at 420 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if I were to increase the temperature, 
Uh, temp setting, let's put this to 500. Okay. And fire now. It is pretty much hitting 40 watts. And it just tail off there a little bit. Uh, you can see just the glow on my fingers there, can't you? Look, it is. That is giving it a right number, that is. Okay, so. I'm going to talk a bit a bit more about this in detail in a minute when we actually see me vaping on this. Um, we know what we should expect when we put this on a DNA 40. Now, this is a hot coil now at some point, so it's not going to play that well on a DNA 40, but we're going to do it anyway. Okay. You know, for better results, you should always put your cores on cold. But there we go. And it has warped a bit, so God knows what it's going to read now. Uh, is it a new? I'm going to say it's the same coil because it is, even though it's not. So 0.27 there. So that's bring up the uh, first. Bring up the wattage to 40, and it cuts out pretty much straight away. But again, you're not seeing any glowing here. Okay. If I were to increase the temperature to 500, like we had it set on the smock, and this is going to keep flashing that now. Right, so let's bring that into. Right, so. 500. Okay. And it cuts out, but again, we're not seeing any glowing whatsoever. So, yeah, with all that said and done, let's keep the DNA 40 out of the equation now. Because you know we've done what we need to do on it. Let's uh, let's get some vape time with this thing, shall we? Right. So here we go then. The Smock M80 Plus. Uh, currently, I've got a Spire Atlantis on top, and I'm a bit thirsty, so I need to have a quick swig. Oh. Right. <clears throat> so then, primarily in the close-up section, we covered the, uh, the temperature control mode. Now. I mean, no doubt I might have upset a few people here, but um, frankly, simply put, the temperature control mode doesn't really do anything. Not really. What it seems to do is, and I have tested it with a lot of... This is why this video has taken a long time to come out, and I've actually reshot this video several times now. I'm, a, I, I, you know, I'm not ashamed to admit it, because I wanted to get this as close to as, as accurate in my, my, my view that I can. Um, now, basically... What I can determine it's doing, and Smock have released no information about this at all, but from what I can determine is you put a coil on there and it measures the resistance. And then you put in the target temperature you want. So you want 500 degrees Fahrenheit, you want 420 degrees Fahrenheit, you want 600 degrees Fahrenheit, and it will fire that coil in what it thinks is the amount of power that it should give it in order to reach that temperature. But it doesn't constantly monitor the temp uh, the resistance of that coil, and adjust as necessary. That, that's how the DNA forty works, basically, right? It, it goes right. The temperature is on, on. It works on a nickel core because it can predict that, and it knows roughly how much temperature is going in um, to increase the resistance. That sort of thing. It, it knows how it reacts. Okay, so it's constantly monitoring, and it will go it, it adjust the power as needed. And if it gets too hot, it will just shut it off. Now. The M80 does not, no way, does not do that at all. Um, basically, it goes, right, I've got a a 0 0.2 ohm coil here. I'm going to, and the user wants it at 500 degrees Fahrenheit, and he wants to fire it at 40 watts. I'm going to supply this amount of voltage in order to reach this amount of wattage. And then that's it, end of it. Uh, you can keep firing and firing and firing. It doesn't make any difference at all. So basically, I... Um, the, the temperature control on this is very flawed. However, having said that, and I need another vape again. This thing cost me 45 quid. Right? 45 quid. And for 45 pounds, what I've purchased is a fairly compact mod. It's not particularly heavy. It's not particularly big. It's a decent size. It's 22 mil across here. So any 22 mil... Atomizer is going to fit on here quite nicely. Um, 
One I've purchased for my £45, plus PMP of course, is a decent sized mod with a good battery life that will fire pretty much any coil I'll put on it, be it a nickel coil, be it a canful coil, be it a nichrome coil, up to 80 watts. Okay? So this is how I'm choosing to look at it. I'm choosing to ignore the temperature control function of it and think of it as you know, on the same sort of level of as the iStick or the uh, the IPV version 2. That sort of level, okay? So I'm thinking of an inexpensive box mod, which is easy to charge because you don't have to take the batteries out, which is a negative in some people's views, of course. Um, but an easy to charge mod, um, easy to maintain, easy to operate device that, as I said, excellent battery life. I mean, I can get two or three days out of the battery easily with this. That will fire. Now this is currently set at 40 watts on a uh, on a stock um, Atlantis coil and it's 0 0.54 ohms reading on this. Uh, 40 watts. I can if I choose, you know, and I do choose in fact, to actually increase that wattage and I'm going to put it to 50. No problem. 80 watts you cry. Okay. 80. There we are. So any avoidance of doubt? 80 watts. No problem at all. And plenty of the vapour. So, here we go then. To sum up, if you're looking for a device that's got temperature control, at this moment in time, I would say go for a DNA40 based device. If you're looking for a mod that's inexpensive, will provide a decent range of uh, wattage, will provide a, a compatibility of a decent range of of, uh, of coils. You know, you need look no further to be honest. Yes, the uh, the fact that you can't remove the batteries will be a negative for some, but to my mind, it's 45 quid. The batteries in this are going to last a couple of years probably. By the time the batteries are dead on this, this thing's going to be sitting around doing nothing. Um, you know, I'll have moved on to something else, as I always do. And that's probably true of most vapors, to be honest. Um, you know. I can't give you a full rundown of the numbers because I don't have the equipment to test the numbers that it's actually outputting. All I can say is anecdotal. Um, it appears to be firing at whatever wattage I put it to. And up to you know, up to a certain level of, of the various devices I have, I, I can compare. And um, it seems to be putting out pretty much on par with them. So, yeah, for what it is, it's a box mod and Smock have added the temperature control function in, which doesn't really work. So ignore that and buy it on the strength of it being a variable wattage device. That is about all I can really advise on. So there we go. Cheers.